thank you everyone for watching Freeland. Uh, my name is Frida Vadamosi and I am the US Indies Programming Fellow. And I'm so excited to have the amazing team from the film Freeland here. It was one of my favorite films to program this year. It was an absolute delight to watch. And I'm so glad to have you all here. So like, I'm just gonna say your first name so you can introduce yourself and how you're attached to the film and then we'll get right into the questions. So we'll start with Kate. Hi, I'm Kate McLean. I'm one of the directors of Freeland. Hi, I'm Mario Freeloni. I'm uh, one of the co-directors. <laughs> Krisha. <laughs> yeah, hi. hi, I'm Krisha Fairchild, and I play Debbie, the lead character. And Laura. I'm Laura Heberton. I'm the producer of Freeland. Great. Um, so one of my first questions uh, is going to be about casting. Um, one of the things that was absolutely, this, the acting in this film is absolutely stunning. Um, and I feel like very blessed to have been able to like watch this film and see um, Krisha perform. So I wanted to know how, what went into the casting process. For anyone. <laughs> well, okay. I had, yeah, it's go ahead. Good, I had seen Krisha at um, South by Southwest when uh, her nephew's film uh, premiered there, Krisha, in which she's so astonishing. And I was desperate to work with her. And we were, or Kate and Mario and I were already working on this film. And I just sort of jumped up and down and said, we have to have this woman. So that was the start of the conversation. And we had to chase her a little bit as one always does with super great talent, but eventually we got her to say yes. Uh, you know, Laura, help me, help me out here. I think it was when Krisha was at the Indie Spirit Awards in 2016, early 2016, mm -hmm. and I was in Los Angeles when I very first heard about it and you sent me the script. I, I want to say that's when it, when it was. Um, yeah, it, it, they didn't have to chase me for any other reason than our, we, our schedules kept. And then at one point we were going to shoot and I was on a TV um, film, series filming in Canada and I broke both my feet. And I was kind of like, uh, pretty sure I can't look like a really competent, strong, capable, able-bodied <laughs> marijuana farmer with two broken feet. They were, they were lovely. They were going to try to work it in, you know? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, I, uh, I was immediately drawn to it, of course, who wouldn't be? And then uh, um, I watched the short that this came from, their short shot up in Humboldt. I was really taken with it. And then it was just a matter of all of us getting on the same page about what story we wanted to tell because it kept changing so fast, the condition up there. And then it was just serendipity when it finally was the time then we were all available and we made it happen. <laughs> uh, speaking of the short, which actually was at Mill Valley Film Festival, um, so what went into the process of crafting the short into a feature film? Yeah, so Kate and I met in grad school, uh, journalism grad school, uh, 10, 11 years ago now, and we made a short together as uh, our thesis film. Um, and, and then ever since, like we worked together a lot, we we're very good friends and we would get together and talk about that world, the people we know there, we've been in touch with a lot of people still there. And, and, and then we started dreaming about oh, what, what, a, what does a feature look like? Is it better to be told as a documentary? Is it better to be told as a, as a fictionalized version of the reality that is there? And pretty early on, we decided we would have more leeway and be able to explore some things that we wanted to explore if we did it as a, as a fictionalized film and then and then from there it was like crafting the scripts and we met Laura um, at IFP uh, Film Week um, six years ago I want to say and, and Laura really helped us like work on work on on the different versions of the scripts um, we had a world from very early on and we knew the world was fascinating and we knew that for whatever reason not a lot of pe people were not approaching it in the way that we thought that the world deserved to be approached and then from there, it was like crafting and finding what the essence of the story was. And then once Krisha came on board, sort of things like kind of fell into place. Um, my next question is uh, more about like the filming process. So like, uh, I, I imagine it was filmed in Humboldt. So I wonder what went into like the filming process. Like I, have, I know that there's still legalities involved in certain spaces. So what went into that process? I imagine that must've been complicated. 
We shot in real locations, real lived in homes, real worked on farms. And uh, like from a pre-production standpoint, what that really entailed was um, getting to know people well, spending a lot of time in the community doing research and building a team that had genuine connections to the place, both to keep us honest from a storytelling perspective and then also to help mm -hmm. open up some of these spaces where there's been this history of not a lot of outsiders coming in, not a lot of cameras being present. Um, and so we had an incredible field producer, Claire Weisbluth, who's an editor here in San Francisco and a storyteller who grew up in the little town where we were shooting. And uh, Claire was really like a true utility player in every sense of the word, be, world, world, word, excuse me, because um, she, could, uh, she could tell us where we were getting things wrong and she uh, kind of understood what we were trying to do with the film and she like trusted us and was an important person from a storytelling perspective. And then she also helped scout some incredible locations and open doors to us that we wouldn't have been able to open ourselves. Um, and that was great. And I'll, I'll just add to that that we saw, because we've been sort of pre-producing the film for, I don't know, half a decade almost, and in some ways, like we would think, oh, this year is going to happen, we'd find locations. We saw the change before full legalization to after legalization, where some farms that were very cagey before, people were you know, a lot more secretive before, now saw it as like, oh, this is this is the future, right? Like, and we suddenly we would be getting uh, visiting places that had branding attached, and we'd be coming home with like T-shirts and hats from the farms, right? Like, um, and it was really interesting to see that shift. I'll, even though the majority of people in Humboldt, the majority of the small farmers, didn't go legal like our character in the film because it's it's impossible to do so. My, my favorite anecdote, if I could break in here, the night that we've wrapped, there, there were still places that were illegal growing operations. And generally speaking, Claire kept us clear of them. But for one of the locations, we had to be on roads that were private roads back into a place where, you know, there were, let's just say there were people with guns kind of watching from their houses at the end of driveways, just to make sure we were going where we were supposed to. And we shot late one night and it was after dark and we are coming back on this road. And there is a very, very visible, large, sturdy gate locked, locking us in to the region. <laughs> And that was, a, that was a Claire and Patrick, actually. Our crew got very resourceful. But it was an interesting time where we all thought, this is not, this is the first time I haven't felt entirely safe in this location. But we resolved it. And uh, with help from the neighbors, I might add, too. The neighbors were ready to help. So. <laughs> Speaking of different locations, one of my favorite scenes, um, which, is a, which is a moment of, like, a little bit of like hilarity, but also just like lostness is the scene in which um, she goes to the expo. So I wanted to know like what went into crafting that scene as well, because I thought it was such a really great demonstration of like what it is to break into this new market that kind of like is pushed out for people who've been in it for years. That, that was a really fun scene because we didn't know what to expect from that place. Uh, Kate and I had been visiting these kinds of expos, but it had been years since we had gone to one. So we didn't know how, how sort of sophisticated and how uh, like tapped into, you know, um, financial, like, I mean, it just felt like, and so we didn't know what to expect. And that was our first day of shooting. Christian had just flown in from Mexico. And uh, <laughs> what we did was we, we went with her there and we shot it at like a doc, right? Like we, she, 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 she went into in character and she just interacted with people. And we had some ideas of what that scene was going to be. And the situation itself um, dictated us to change the scene. And in, uh, she was supposed to like try to hand out some samples, you know, that she brought from her farm. And once we got there, the atmosphere was so like anathema to what she is uh, that, that it didn't make any sense. So we changed it and, and just like, okay, let's just play this scene out as fish out of water, just go and experience it. And, and afterwards would go and tell people, hey, this is actually for a fiction film. It's not, you know, like, you, you, and, and get releases and, and so on. But uh, it, was a, it was an amazing way to like start the film in this, in this doc style that we know so well. So, so it was very, 
For delightful. me, it was like a bad acid trip, is what I told them. <laughs> that if this is like she has walked into this place and this time and these people, and they're showing her things that, that look like something out of Star Wars, and she's expected to, to buy them, to put on her little bitty farm for her little operation, where she's in the woodshed, basically, doing all the, all the technical stuff. And, you know, I, I, I actually flashed, oh, my God, the power bill. To run, to run all these things up in humble. <laughs> it was surreal, incredibly surreal. And, and as he said, it was our first day of shooting. And it, I don't know what could have made us more cohesive as a team than that experience as a first day, because we were all stumbling around like fish out of water in that environment. It, 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 it took all the poetry out of what it was that we thought we were telling a story about. And it was exactly appropriate that it did that. <laughs> I think that scene definitely, I can see that energy, the surrealness of it all in the scene. It was such, such a, like a, it was a grounding scene within the film in which you really get to see what um, the, the character is up against. Um, and I thought that was, it was so beautifully done. Um, another scene that I really enjoyed, I mean, most people love the ending, but I really do love the, the scene at the very end when she's coming in out of the water. And I wanted to know, like, uh, of course, there's like, it's up to interpretation how you want to feel and how you approach it. Like, what were you trying to convey to the audience in that moment? Me or the people who wrote it, because we, <laughs> we did both. I think, I think we, I actually, Mario and Kate, I actually think that the last look that I threw in out of that organic kind of sense of awe at the world that I had risen up into actually uh, worked with what we were going for, which was, um, obviously, it's clear what we were going for. But what happened is, when I came up out of the water, it was like a new world. And the birds just were screaming. It was dawn, right? Remember, Mario? And the birds just were going crazy. And the light and the mist on the water. and. I was despairing and the world would not let me despair. And to me, again, it's, it's, you know, that's a metaphor for what life is a little bit like right now for a lot of people. And that rebirth from nature is why so many people want to be outside right now during this pandemic and why, why it, it, it and, and so to me, it was a completely organic button that had been intended to be left where you don't know you don't know what's going to happen to her next. You're unsure where she's going to go. And the nature around me just answered it for me. And they allowed, because that's the way they were, they allowed whatever came from, the, from their, their collaborators. So. Yeah, I think for us, I mean, I, I think Christian's absolutely right. I think we, were, we had a, a, a sort of a, a vague idea of what, what we thought would fit, right, like, as, a, as an ending for the film. And we try to create the conditions that some magic could happen, <laughs> and then and have the camera rolling when it did, and 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 it did, right? I think like I mean, it's it's all in the it, in, in so like so many of the so much of the film, it's all in this sort of in this in this catching that magic moment of, of performance, I think, and and being there, being being ready, and and facilitating a like a a space where everybody's doing that, right? Like, not just like, I mean, I think like um, the amazing performers like Krisha, but also the crew was feeling like felt uh, open to, to try things, to, to make mistakes, to, you know, just like say, I don't know how to do this. We don't know how to end this, you know, like to be, to be open in that way. And I think that's the, that's the thing I'm most proud of in the movie, I think, is, is this ability, the, 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 the atmosphere we created. I think it was um, quite special. Um, the atmosphere really was fantastic for most of the film, not just in that scene. Like, it, it, I felt like I was there with them for a good portion of the film. And I think some of that was also, and when I read in the description, that you actually used people who were in those areas in the film. So what was it like, essentially, it, it sounded like this film was kind of hybrid in some ways, in which you were also, like, shooting actual... Uh, lead farmers who were out there and like talking about their experience. Was it, was that part scripted or was it more just getting stories from people? 
The film was loosely scripted. We had sort of an extended treatment that we brought up there, um, but it was really written in response to the world that was changing around us. So Mario and I were in the car driving up to the first shoot, actually rewriting a section of the script because people were uh, receiving these letters if they hadn't applied for legalization permits that were trying to put them out of business. And we found out that detail and we thought like this has to be part of the film. So I don't know, I wouldn't call it like a true hybrid in the sense that we weren't like interviewing real people. We weren't following real processes. We come from documentary. And so I think we really know how to do that. And this was not that. But what I think did come in a documentary sense was we wanted a very deep understanding of the place. Um, and we wanted to use as much richness and detail as possible that came from life. Um, and have that infuse our process. And we wanted to be good listeners wherever we were in these real lived in environments and make sure that the experiences that we were hearing, that the people that Krisha was talking to at the farmer's market when we had a day off or, you know, uh, the little detail in the trim room of how something was done, uh, that we were incorporating those things into our process all the time and that we were also listening to the people around us who knew things about that world and saying, are we getting this right? How could this be better? You know, um, what feels right or wrong to you? Um, so I guess just being in a listening mode was something that comes very much from our documentary background that we tried to bring into this. And I feel like when I was watching the film, I was learning more about a space that I didn't understand. So that definitely came through. I don't know much about weed farming <laughs> until I watch this movie. This will be my reference point now. Uh, cool. <laughs> my call to action. Um, so I was very, very thankful and it, it, that definitely came through. Um, I like to ask like a, a more fun question. Um, so what was uh, your, your favorite scene to shoot or be part of or to be there for? Such a good question. I'll jump in because I know mine. Um, yeah. uh, that commune scene just just really spoke to me and to John in a really deep way. And Claire, the, the our angel who had facilitated us, um, that was part of her of her childhood. That place, and so for her taking us on these little roads to this place, and it's this tumble down place. But there were books in the bookshelves and. There were, the piece of paper that he's reading on the wall was really there. The, 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 there were mason jars on all the windowsills full of like three inches of dust. When I was sweeping, I was really sweeping the detrius of a place that had been sitting there abandoned for such a long time. And um, even though there was very little dialogue for it, I thought that the dialogue that they had written was word for word exactly perfect and that's how we that's how we performed it and it was that and smoking the joint with john those are <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are two of the best scenes in the whole yeah. movie they're yeah. just Classic, but... the two of you are wonderful we need to get you a television show the two of you well we were and and you know what we were actually smoking laura i don't know if you were aware of this neither yes. of us really yes. smoked we were actually yes smoking. i was like American spirits or something like that. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah. we weren't getting- It was green tea. You were smoking green, green tea. tea. I was like, oh God, poor Krisha. <laughs> no, I was like, okay. <laughs> I love uh, both the filming process and uh, and then working with the scene uh, where Debbie goes to meet a younger grower named Buddha whose parents have moved away and who it was like, and that, that scene just, there's some scenes that just like happen very easily, you know, from our end, you know, because the, the, just the performance, like the first take of that scene was amazing. And then we just kept like playing with it. And, and there was so much more that came. And um, uh, the, the, even though we were in the middle of the day, the light was, was gorgeous. It just like everything in that scene just sort of happened so easily. And it just felt like fluid and, and ah, yeah, so good. Yeah. I loved the scene in the water at the end. Um, it was 6 a 5 a.m. really when we came out to the beach. It was freezing cold. You know, it's the end of the summer. Um, 
it's dark as you're walking out along these rocks, like a total ankle twisting sort of like nightmare kind of a scenario. And Krisha was such an inspiration in that where she walked out to the water and, you know, you told us beforehand that you weren't a super confident swimmer and didn't love putting your head underwater, but you did it like with such a plum and so beautifully and so bravely in this freezing temperature on a set where we couldn't give you all of the amenities that you might receive on a much bigger movie and certainly deserve. Um, a blanket. A blanket, but I mean, you know, I don't know. I just felt like we should have a heat lamp and a crew to zoom in and, you know, the whole, the whole bit. And we had almost none of those things. And you, uh, you were just uh, luminous and a total pro. And, uh, you know, Mario was in a wetsuit with a camera in a, like, in a submersible contraption. We had no monitor, so I really had nothing to offer. And I just sort of treaded water next to you guys and watched Cresha. Uh, and thought, oh man, I think we're getting it right now. Um, it was it was one of those things where everybody played their part very perfectly. You know, someone had secured uh, a lot of real prop weed and prepared it for us, uh, and uh, and then someone else swam through the water with a giant net to skim it all out at the end, so we left no trace. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, we had to get wide shots of the beach, so the whole crew had to hide in a bush at a very far <laughs> edge of everything. So it was like, you know, Mario was yelling from the water and people were scurrying into the bushes and coming back out when they could help. Um, and, and we didn't have a lot of time while the light was just right to get it. And somehow, it was the last thing that we shot too, and somehow like the camaraderie that we had built in the course of the production and the trust that we had built and the ability to listen to each other was all such that um, people could really perform their roles in the, in the limited amount of time that we had, like very perfectly. And um, mine was very minimal in that. So I felt like I could just sit back and watch what we had built, uh, this machine that was humming along perfectly and feel so proud of everyone that we'd brought together for this movie. Amen. Two, uh, two trivia questions no one asked about. 10 actual pounds. That was what was in the bags. It was actual, actual <laughs> 10 pounds. Okay. And never try to have a 200 pound woman submerge in water without weights. <laughs> Remember that? I couldn't go, I couldn't stay under. Poor Mario, he's catching the shot of going under, and then I'm like, boom, like a cork. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it was a great last last day, wasn't it? I mean, it really was. That's hurrah. <laughs> well, I kind of answered like two of my questions which were going to be, was that your last day of shooting? And then how much weed was it? But like, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there you go. <laughs> but, um, also, uh, Laura, were you on set? Like, did you have a particular favorite moment in the film? No, I sadly, I was unable to be on set. So when I hear all these stories, it makes me incredibly happy. I was in close contact with everybody, but I was not on set. Um, and so I was just thinking for a moment, I've been, we've been doing these Q and A's and, um, it always makes me incredibly sad that I wasn't there on set because everybody formed this great family that I feel like I'm a part of, but also I wasn't there. But then I had that little twang that I've had. And then I always think, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful and so fantastic. And it's just wonderful to be a part of it, um, you know, just uh, you know, like a lot of people in post aren't on set, but they're just as much as part of the uh, film. And so, um, uh, so I feel all that. I feel, I feel all that love that they had, and I'm definitely a, a, a part, a part of that. Um, but um, uh, it was, it was hard not to. It was very hard not to be able to be there. The timing just was uh, terrible for me. So well, every day started. Our minds. Yeah, every <laughs> day started with a call to Laura. Every day, every night ended with a call to Laura. Laura Every sent day. us packages. <laughs> packages. packages. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And who did I call? The first person I called the morning I woke up with a sore throat. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah exactly. I, was, exactly. I, got, I have a sore throat. Exactly. Laura, I have a sore throat. 
<laughs> but the thing I want to say, we have enough time just quickly too about their documentary style. And, and you know, they are both of these people, Kate and Mario are fun, really superb documentarians. And I think one of the things that I, I say when I talk about the film to my friends and whatnot that Kate just said was what great documentarians do is they listen. And I really, I don't, and maybe the best directors also listen uh, too, but I don't know. I've worked with a lot of very talented people who are good listening. Some, they listen less for, for different reasons, but I think that's the incredible strength of this story. And I think that listening is also what made that, that family happen, that camaraderie happen. Um, and, you know, and um, what makes a great documentarian, are you born that way? Are Kate and Mario all just great listeners anyway? I think, I think they are. Um, and I think, uh, you know, listening to the people of Humboldt County, listening to the pot growers, then listening to the actors and listening to the stories as it, as it grew um, uh, is what makes it, makes it so beautiful. So, um, next film I'll be on set the whole time. They better watch out. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I think it definitely shows. It's one of those films, like, I watch a lot of films because this is what I do. But like, uh, it was one of those films in which when you're watching, you really do feel like you're meeting actual people. And like, sometimes you watch a movie and you get immersed in the world. But like, it felt like I was meeting, I was learning about this world that I didn't have access to in general. And I felt like that definitely came across. And I think, of, I do think an element of that is because you're documentarians. You, you are very good at like seeing the people in that moment. And I thought that definitely came through in the film in such a wonderful way. Um, I was moved to tears in that last scene when you were talking about the last scene as well. I just felt very connected to the character and I felt uh, very thankful that I got to be part of the journey by watching. <laughs> oh, <good>. um, <laughs> and then uh, my final question is usually just more of a, like, uh, I love the film. So of course, what can we do to support the film? What would you like for us to do? And then if you have anything else that you're planning in the future, so like, What's next? Mm -hmm. So we are uh, uh, right now lo looking for distribution for the film. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, things have been so crazy. Um, and, but we've, we're, we're doing festivals and we're hoping that as the market sort of settles, we'll find a home. We'll, we're, we feel pretty confident that we will uh, eventually find a good home for the film and that it will be available for people to watch and we just want people to watch it you know like I think um, I think there's a lot of people if people are like you know if people want to get in, involved in I think there's sort of like the, the sort of the, the crisis of like small cannabis farmers is the crisis of small farmers in the US right like a bit large so I think there's a lot to do um, that, I, that I think people can get involved uh, but you know, like the kind of film we, we make and uh, are not, it's not like saying, you should think this way about this, you know, like this issue is a presenting a world and, and, and sort of like, you know, hopefully enticing people and getting them more interest, more curious about this world. So that's what we hope. And, and we're actually, so we are on that, that note, we are working on uh, very early on a series that would be also set in Humboldt, but this time in the early 80s when uh, pot went from being a small crop that people planted just to smoke and to give to friends to suddenly being something that you can make quite a bit of money with and that became quite dangerous to do. So that moment we really is fascinating and we would love to, to approach it as kind of a more sprawling um, series. I just want to say, Thank you all for coming and thank you so much for sharing your amazing film with us. Um, I just, I, I, I keep talking about it and waxing poetic about it, but I really did enjoy the film and I'm so excited for more people to see it. And thank you everyone who's watching right now, who watched this film, who streamed this film. Um, go tell your friends about it, uh, this fantastic film. Um, and thank you for joining us at the Mill Valley Film Festival. Thank, thank you so much. You. And thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for programming us. Please let, make sure you get that in to get that in. We really, <laughs> we really appreciate it because this is where they world premiered their documentary. Um, it's so it's fantastic. <laughs> thank you. It's awesome thank to be back. You. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Bye.